The Maritime Republics Italian, of the Mediterranean Basin were thalassocratic city-states which flourished in Italy and Dalmatia during the Middle Ages. The best known among the Maritime Republics are Venice, Genoa, Pisa, and Amalfi. Less known are Ragusa, Gita, Ancona, and Noli. From the 10th to the 13th centuries they built fleets of ships both for their own protection and to support extensive trade networks across the Mediterranean, giving them an essential role in the Crusades. Overview The Maritime Republics were city-states. They were generally republics in that they were formally independent, though most of them originated from territories once formally belonging to the Byzantine Empire, the main exceptions being Genoa and Pisa. During the time of their independence, all these cities had similar, though not identical, systems of government, in which the merchant class had considerable power. The maritime republics were heavily involved in the Crusades, providing transport and support but most especially taking advantage of the political and trading opportunities resulting from these wars. The Fourth Crusade, originally intended to liberate Jerusalem, actually entailed the Venetian conquest of Zara and Constantinople. Each of the maritime republics had dominion over different overseas lands, including many Mediterranean islands, and especially Sardinia and Corsica, lands on the Adriatic, Aegean, and Black Sea Crimea, and commercial colonies in the Near East and North Africa. Venice stands out from the rest in that it maintained enormous tracts of land in Greece, Cyprus, Istria and Dalmatia until as late as the mid-17th century. Origins and Development the economic growth of Europe around the year 1000, together with the hazards of the mainland trading routes, made possible the development of major commercial routes along the Mediterranean coast. The growing independence acquired by some coastal cities gave them a leading role in this development. These cities, exposed to pirate raids, mostly Saracen, organized their own defense, providing themselves substantial war fleets. Thus, in the 10th and 11th centuries they were able to switch to an offensive stance, taking advantage of the rivalry between the Byzantine and Islamic maritime powers and competing with them for the control of commerce and trade routes with Asia and Africa. The independent cities formed autonomous republican governments, an expression of the merchant class that constituted the backbone of their power. The history of the maritime republics intertwines both with the launch of European expansion to the east and with the origins of modern capitalism as a mercantile and financial system. Using gold coins, the merchants of the Italian maritime republics began to develop new foreign exchange transactions and accounting. Technological advances in navigation provided essential support for the growth of mercantile wealth. Nautical charts of the 14th and 15th centuries all belong to the schools of Genoa, Venice and Ancona. The Crusades offered opportunities for expansion. They increasingly relied on Italian sea transport, for which the republics extracted concessions of colonies as well as a cash price. Venice, Amalfi, Ancona, and Ragusa were already engaged in trade with the Levant, but the phenomenon increased with the Crusades. Thousands of Italians from the maritime republics poured into the eastern Mediterranean and the Black Sea, creating bases, ports and commercial establishments known as colonies. These were small gated enclaves within a city, often just a single street, where the laws of the Italian city were administered by a governor appointed from home, and there would be a church under home jurisdiction and shops with Italian styles of food. These Italian mercantile centers also exerted significant political influence locally. The Italian merchants formed guild-like associations in their business centers, aiming to obtain legal, tax and customs privileges from foreign governments. Several personal dominions arose. Para in Constantinople, first Genoese and later, under the Ottomans, Venetian, was the largest and best-known Italian trading base. The history of the various maritime republics is quite varied, reflecting their different lifespans. Venice, Genoa, Noli, and Ragusa had very long lives, with an independence that outlasted the medieval period and continued up to the threshold of the contemporary era, when the Italian and European states were devastated by the Napoleonic Wars. Other republics kept their independence until the Renaissance. Pisa came under the dominion of the Republic of Florence in 1406, and Ancona came under control of the Papal States in 1532. Amalfi and Gita, though, lost their independence very soon, the first in 1131 and the second in 1140, both having passed into the hands of the Normans. Amalfi 
Amalfi, perhaps the first of the maritime republics to play a major role, had developed extensive trade with Byzantium and Egypt. Amalfitan merchants wrested the Mediterranean trade monopoly from the Arabs and founded mercantile bases in southern Italy and the Middle East in the 10th century. Amalfitans were the first to create a colony in Constantinople. Among the most important products of the Republic of Amalfi are the Amalfian Laws, a codification of the rules of maritime law which remained in force throughout the Middle Ages. From 1039 Amalfi came under the control of the Principality of Salerno. In 1073 Robert Giscard conquered the city, taking the title Dukes Amalfitanorum, Duke of the Amalfitans. In 1096 Amalfi revolted and reverted to an independent republic, but this was put down in 1101. It revolted again in 1130 and was finally subdued in 1131. Amalfi was sacked by Pisans in 1137, at a time when it was weakened by natural disasters, severe flooding, and was annexed to the Norman lands in southern Italy. Thereafter, Amalfi began a rapid decline and was replaced in its role as the main commercial hub of Campania by the Duchy of Naples. Pisa In 1016 an alliance of Pisa and Genoa defeated the Saracens, conquered Corsica and gained control of the Tyrrhenian Sea. A century later they freed the Balearic Islands in an expedition that was celebrated in the Gesta Triumphalia per Pisanos and in the Liber Maioricinus epic poem, composed in 1113–1115. Pisa, at that time overlooking the sea at the mouth of the Arno, reached the pinnacle of its glory between the 12th and 13th centuries, when its ships controlled the western Mediterranean. Rivalry between Pisa and Genoa grew worse in the 12th century and resulted in the naval battle of Meloria 1284, which marked the beginning of Pisan decline. Pisa renounced all claim to Corsica and ceded part of Sardinia to Genoa in 1299. Moreover, the Aragonese conquest of Sardinia, which began in 1324, deprived the Tuscan city of dominion over the Judicati of Colliery and Galura. Pisa maintained its independence and control of the Tuscan coast until 1409, when it was annexed by Florence. Genoa Genoa began to gain autonomy from the Holy Roman Empire around 1096, becoming a medieval commune and participating in the First Crusades. Initially called Campana Communis, the denomination of republic was made official in 1528 on the initiative of Admiral Andrea Doria. The alliance with Pisa allowed the liberation of the western sector of the Mediterranean from Saracen pirates, with the reconquest of Corsica, the Balearics and Provence. The formation of the Campana Communis, a meeting of all the city's trade associations company, also comprising the noble lords of the surrounding valleys and coasts, finally signaled the birth of Genoese government. The fortunes of the town increased considerably when it joined the First Crusade, its participation brought great privileges for the Genoese communities, which moved to many places in the Holy Land. The apex of Genoese fortune came in the 13th century with the conclusion of the Treaty of Nymphium 1261 with the Byzantine Emperor Michael VIII Paleologus. In exchange for aiding the Byzantine reconquest of Constantinople, this led to the ousting of the Venetians from the straits leading to the Black Sea, which quickly became a Genoese sea. Shortly afterwards, in 1284, Pisa was finally defeated in the Battle of Meloria by the Genoese navy. In 1298 the Genoese defeated the Venetian fleet at the Dalmatian island of Curzola. The confrontation led to the capture of the Venetian Doge and Marco Polo, who during his imprisonment at the Palazzo San Giorgio dictated the story of his travels to Rusticello da Pisa, his cellmate. Genoa remained relatively powerful until the last major conflict with Venice, the War of Chioga of 1379. It ended in victory for the Venetians, who finally regained dominance over trade to the east. After a gloomy 15th century marked by plagues and foreign domination, the city regained self-government in 1528 through the efforts of Andrea Doria. Throughout the following century Genoa became the primary sponsor of the Spanish monarchy, reaping huge profits, which allowed the old patrician class to remain vital for a period. However, the republic was independent only de jure, as it often fell under the influence of major neighboring powers, first the French and Spanish, then the Austrians and Savoyards. 
It was finally subdued by Napoleon in 1805 and annexed to the Kingdom of Sardinia in 1815, destroying the economy and forcing the emigration of the best workers and most of the rural population to the Americas. Venice the Republic of Venice, also known as La Serenissima, the most serene, came into being in 421 as a result of the development of trade relations with the Byzantine Empire, of which it was once formally a part, albeit with a substantial degree of independence. Venice remained an ally of Byzantium in the fight against Arabs and Normans. Around 1000 it began its expansion in the Adriatic, defeating the pirates who occupied the coast of Istria and Dalmatia and placing those regions and their principal townships under Venetian control. At the beginning of the 13th century, the city reached the peak of its power, dominating the commercial traffic in the Mediterranean and with the Orient. During the Fourth Crusade 1202-1204, its fleet was decisive in the acquisition of the islands and the most commercially important seaside towns of the Byzantine Empire. The conquest of the important ports of Corfu 1207 and Crete 1209 gave it a trade that extended to the east and reached Syria and Egypt, endpoints of maritime trading routes. By the end of the 14th century, Venice had become one of the richest states in Europe. Its dominance in the eastern Mediterranean in later centuries was threatened by the expansion of the Ottoman Empire in those areas, despite the great naval victory in the Battle of Lepanto in 1571 against the Turkish fleet, fought with the Holy League. The Republic of Venice expanded strongly on the mainland, too. It became the largest of the maritime republics and was the most powerful state of northern Italy until 1797, when Napoleon invaded the Venetian lagoon and conquered Venice. The city passed between French and Austrian control over the next half-century, before briefly regaining its independence during the revolutions of 1848. Austrian rule resumed a year later, and continued until 1866, when Veneto passed into the Kingdom of Italy. Ancona Included in the Papal States since 774, Ancona came under the influence of the Holy Roman Empire around 1000, but gradually gained independence to become fully independent with the coming of the Communes in the 12th century. Its motto was Ancon Dorica Civitas Fidei, Dorian Ancona, City of Faith. Its coin was the Agantano. Although somewhat confined by Venetian supremacy on the sea, Ancona was a notable maritime republic for its economic development and its preferential trade, particularly with the Byzantine Empire. It enjoyed excellent relations with the Kingdom of Hungary and was an ally of the Republic of Ragusa. Despite the link with Byzantium, it also maintained good relations with the Turks, enabling it to serve as Central Italy's gateway to the Orient. The warehouses of the Republic of Ancona were continuously active in Constantinople, Alexandria and other Byzantine ports, while the sorting of goods imported by land, especially textiles and spices fell to the merchants of Lucca and Florence. In art, Ancona was one of the centers of so-called Adriatic Renaissance, that particular kind of Renaissance that spread between Dalmatia, Venice and the Marches, characterized by a rediscovery of classical art and a certain continuity with Gothic art. The maritime cartographer Grazioso Benin Casa was born in Ancona, as was the navigator archaeologist Suriaco de Pizzicoli, named by his fellow humanists, father of the antiquities who made his contemporaries aware of the existence of the Parthenon, the pyramids, the Sphinx and other famous ancient monuments believed destroyed. Ancona always had to guard itself against the designs of both the Holy Roman Empire and the Papacy. It never attacked other maritime cities, but was always forced to defend itself. It succeeded until 1532, when it lost its independence after Pope Clement VII took possession of it by political means. Ragusa In the first half of the 7th century, Ragusa began to develop an active trade in the East Mediterranean. From the 11th century, it emerged as a maritime and mercantile city, especially in the Adriatic. The first known commercial contract goes back to 1148 and was signed with the city of Malfetta, but other cities came along in the following decades, including Pisa, Termoli and Naples. After the fall of Constantinople in 1204, during the Fourth Crusade, Ragusa came under the dominion of the Republic of Venice, from which it inherited most of its institutions. 
Venetian rule lasted for one and a half centuries and determined the institutional structure of the future republic, with the emergence of the Senate in 1252 and the approval of the Ragusa Statute on 9 May 1272. In 1358, following a war with the Kingdom of Hungary, the Treaty of Zadar forced Venice to give up many of its possessions in Dalmatia. Ragusa voluntarily became a dependency of the Kingdom of Hungary, obtaining the right to self-government in exchange for help with its fleet and payment of an annual tribute. Ragusa was fortified and equipped with two ports. The Communitas Ragusina began to be called Respublica Ragusina from 1403. Basing its prosperity on maritime trade, Ragusa became the major power of the southern Adriatic and came to rival the Republic of Venice. For centuries Ragusa was an ally of Ancona, Venice's other rival in the Adriatic. This alliance enabled the two towns on opposite sides of the Adriatic to resist attempts by the Venetians to make the Adriatic a Venetian Bay, which would have given Venice direct or indirect control over all the Adriatic ports. The Venetian trade route went via Germany and Austria, Ancona and Ragusa developed an alternative route going west from Ragusa through Ancona to Florence and finally to Flanders. Ragusa was the door to the Balkans and the East, a place of commerce in metals, salt, spices and cinnabar. It reached its peak during the 15th and 16th centuries thanks to tax exemptions for affordable goods. Its social structure was rigid, and the lower classes played no part in its government, but it was advanced in other ways. In the 14th century the first pharmacy was opened there, followed by a hospice. In 1418 the trafficking of slaves was abolished. When the Ottoman Empire advanced into the Balkan Peninsula and Hungary was defeated in the Battle of Mohacs in 1526, Ragusa came formally under the supremacy of the Sultan. It bound itself to pay him a symbolic annual tribute, a move that allowed it to maintain its effective independence. The 17th century saw a slow decline of the Republic of Ragusa, due mainly to an earthquake in 1667 which razed much of the city, claiming 5,000 victims, including the rector, Simone de Gataldi. The city was quickly rebuilt at the expense of the Pope and the kings of France and England, which made it a jewel of 17th century urbanism, and the Republic enjoyed a short revival. The Treaty of Pesarowitz of 1718 gave it full independence but increased the tax to be paid at the gate, set at 12,500 ducats. Austria occupied the Republic of Ragusa on 24 August 1798. The Peace of Pressburg of 1805 assigned the city to France. In 1806, after a siege of a month, Ragusa surrendered to the French. The Republic was finally dissolved by order of General Auguste Marmont on 31 January 1808 and was annexed to the Napoleonic Illyrian provinces. Relationships Relationships between the maritime republics were governed by their commercial interests, and were often expressed as political or economic agreements aimed at shared profit from a trade route or mutual non-interference. But competition for control of the trade routes to the east and in the Mediterranean sparked rivalries that could not be settled diplomatically, and there were several clashes among the maritime republics. Pisa and Venice Towards the end of the 11th century, the First Crusade in the Holy Land began on the initiative of Pope Urban II, supported by the speeches of Peter the Hermit. Venice and Pisa entered the Crusade almost simultaneously, and the two republics were soon in competition. The Venetian naval army of Bishop Eugenio Contarini clashed with the Pisan army of Archbishop Dagobert in the sea around Rhodes. Pisa and Venice gave support to the siege of Jerusalem by the army led by Godfrey of Bouillon. The Pisan force remained in the Holy Land. Daybert became the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem and crowned Godfrey of Bouillon first Christian King of Jerusalem. Venice, in contrast, soon ended its participation in the First Crusade, probably because its interests lay mainly in balancing Pisan and Genoese influence in the Orient. Relationships between Pisa and Venice were not always characterized by rivalry and antagonism. Over the centuries, the two republics signed several agreements concerning their zones of influence and action, to avoid hindering each other. 
On 13 October 1180 the Doge of Venice and a representative of the Pisan Consul signed an agreement for the reciprocal non-interference in Adriatic and Tyrrhenian affairs, and in 1206 Pisa and Venice concluded a treaty in which they reaffirmed the respective zones of influence. Between 1494 and 1509, during the siege of Pisa by Florence, Venice went to rescue of the Pisans, following a policy of safeguarding Italian territory from foreign intervention. Venice and Genoa The relationship between Genoa and Venice was almost continuously competitive and hostile, both economically and militarily. Until the beginning of the 13th century, hostilities were limited to rare acts of piracy and isolated skirmishes. In 1218 Venice and Genoa reached an agreement to end the piracy and to safeguard each other. Genoa was guaranteed the right to trade in the Eastern Imperial Lands, a new and profitable market. War of St. Sabas and the Conflict of 1293-99 Conflict between the two republics reached a violent crisis in the struggle at St. Jean de Kerr for ownership of the St. Sabas Monastery. The Genoese occupied it in 1255, beginning hostilities with the sacking of the Venetian neighborhood and the destruction of the ships docked there. Venice first agreed to an alliance with Pisa regarding their common interests in Syria and Palestine, but then counter-attacked, destroying the fortified monastery. The flight of the Genoese and of the Baron Philip of Montfort, ruler of the Christian Principality of Syria, concluded the first phase of the punitive expedition. Just one year later, the three maritime powers fought an uneven conflict in the waters facing St. Jean de Kerr. Almost all the Genoese galleys were sunk and 1,700 fighters and sailors were killed. The Genoese replied with new alliances. The Nicene throne was usurped by Michael VIII Palaiologos, that aimed at reconquest of the lands once owned by the Byzantine Empire. His expansionist project suited the Genoese. The Nicene fleet and army conquered and occupied Constantinople, causing the collapse of the Latin Empire of Constantinople less than 60 years after its creation. Genoa replaced Venice in the monopoly of commerce with the Black Sea territories. This period of conflict between Genoa and Venice ended with the Battle of Curzola of 1298, won by Genoa, in which the Venetian admiral Andrea Dandolo was taken prisoner. To avoid the shame of arriving in Genoa in shackles, Dandolo committed suicide by smashing his head against the oar to which he was tied. A year later, the Republic signed a peace treaty in Milan. War of Chioga Towards the end of the 14th century, Cyprus was occupied by the Genoese and ruled by the Signoria of Pietro II of Lusignano, while the smaller island of Tenedos, an important port of call on the Bosphorus and Black Sea route, was conceded by Andronikos IV Palaiologos to Genoa in place of the concession of his father John V Palaiologos to Venice. These two events fueled the resumption of hostilities between the two maritime republics, which were expanding from the east to the west of the Mediterranean. The conflict was named the War of Chioga because the Venetians, after an initial success, were defeated in Pula by the Genoese, who occupied Chioga and besieged Venice. The Venetians established a new fleet and besieged the Genoese in Chioga in turn, forcing them to surrender in 1380. The war ended in favor of the Venetians with the Peace of Turin on 8 April 1381. The capture of Constantinople by the Ottomans of Mehmed II on 29 May 1453 put an end to the 11 centuries of the Byzantine Empire. This event aroused strong feelings that inspired Pope Nicholas V to plan a crusade. To realize his idea, the Pope mediated between the two coalitions that were continuing to battle in Tuscany and Lombardy. Cosimo de Medici and Alfonso V of Aragon entered the Italic League, together with Pope Nicholas, with Francesco Sforza of Milan and with Venice. While Popes Callistus II and Pius II tried to progress their predecessor's idea and were canvassing the states of the Italic League and other European powers to interest them in a crusade, the Ottomans defeated many Genoese and Venetian colonies. These events showed the superiority of the new great naval and military Ottoman power in the eastern Mediterranean and forced the two Italian maritime republics to seek a new destiny. Genoa founded the growth of international finance, Venice in land expansion. Land battles and gathering in the Holy League 
Around the middle 15th century, Genoa entered into a triple alliance with Florence and Milan, with Charles VII of France as its head. Meanwhile, Venice sided with Alfonso V of Aragon, who occupied the throne of Naples. Due to the rivalry of the Italian states, two great coalitions were formed, and foreign intervention in the peninsula was steadily increasing. To oppose the Ottomans, Venice and Genoa put aside their differences in the 16th century to join the Holy League created by Pius V. Most of the Christian fleet consisted of Venetian ships, around 100 galleys. Genoa sailed under the Spanish flag, as the Republic of Genoa lent all its ships to Philip II. The impressive Christian League fleet gathered in the Gulf of Lepanto under the command of the Spaniard John of Austria to clash with the Turkish fleet commanded by Kapudan Ali Pasha. The Battle of Lepanto was fought from midday on 7 October 1571 until the following dawn and ended in victory for the Christian League. Genoa and Pisa to begin with, these two maritime republics, close to one another on the Tyrrhenian Sea, collaborated as allies against the threat of Arab expansion. However, their later rivalry dominated the western Mediterranean. Allied against Arabs At the beginning of the second millennium, Muslim armies had advanced into Sicily, and were trying to conquer Calabria and Sardinia. To resist them, Pisa and Genoa joined forces to banish the fleet of Mujahid al-Amiri from the coasts of Sardinia, where it had settled temporarily between 1015 and 1016, threatening the survival of the Sardinian judicati. Once that was achieved, disputes soon broke out over control of the conquered territories. Due to the limited forces available, the alliance was unable to occupy the large Tyrrhenian island for long. The many disputes, even the armed ones, were set aside in 1087 when they reunited to fight their common enemy. In the summer of the same year, a massive fleet composed of 200 galleys from Genoa and Pisa, with some from Gita, Salerno and Amalfi, set sail for the Mediterranean coast of Africa. The fleet mounted a successful offensive against Madia on 6 August 1087. On 21 April 1092 the Pope elevated the Archdiocese of Pisa to the rank of Metropolitan Archdiocese and placed the bishops of Corsica under its authority. That same victorious expedition persuaded Pope Urban II that a large crusade to liberate the Holy Land would be possible. Around the 1110s, Pope Paschal II asked Pisans and Genoese to organize a crusade in the western Mediterranean. The expedition was very successful and freed the Balearic Islands from the Muslims. As a sign of gratitude, the Pope granted many privileges to the two republics. The Pisan Archbishop was granted primacy over Sardinia, in addition to Corsica. First War Between Pisa and Genoa the papal concessions to the Archbishop of Pisa greatly increased the fame of the Tuscan Republic throughout the Mediterranean, but at the same time aroused Genoese envy, which soon developed into conflict. In 1119, the Genoese attacked some Pisan galleys, beginning a bloody war on sea and land. It lasted until 1133, interrupted by several truces that were sometimes observed and sometimes violated. The clashes were brought to an end by sharing authority over the Corsican dioceses between the two cities. Second War When Emperor Frederick I Barbarossa came to Italy to oppose the power of the Italian cities, Genoa gave its support to the imperial cause, although with slight reservations, while Pisa made its support conditional on the emperor taking part in the siege of Milan. In 1162 and 1163 Frederick I granted Pisa great privileges, such as control of the Tyrrhenian coast as far as Civitavecchia. This reignited Genoa's resentment and rivalry, which once again developed into open conflict. There was a pause in the conflict on Frederick's fourth descent into Italy, but it resumed soon after his departure. Peace was reached on 6 November 1175 with the return of the Holy Roman Emperor to Italy. The agreement favored Genoa, expanding its overseas territories. Pisa and Genoa took part in the campaign commanded by Frederick's successor Henry VI against the Kingdom of Sicily. Defeat of Pisa From 1282 to 1284 Genoa and Pisa reverted to fighting each other. A decisive naval battle occurred on 6 August 1284. 
Pisan and Genoese fleets fought the whole day in what became known as the Battle of Meloria. The Genoese emerged victorious, while the Pisan galleys, having received no help, were forced to retreat to the port of Pisa. Prisoners taken by the Genoese were in the order of thousands. Among them was the poet Rusticello da Pisa, who met Marco Polo, captured during the Battle of Curzola, and wrote down the adventures of the Venetian explorer. The Battle of Meloria greatly reduced the power of the Pisan Republic, which never regained its leading role in the western Mediterranean. Pisa had lost thousands of young men in the battle, causing a population collapse. Venice did not intervene to help its ally Pisa in its crisis. Some historians consider this decision to have been an error on the part of Venice, which yielded supremacy of the Tyrrhenian Sea to rival Genoa and simultaneously lost the precious help of Pisa in the east. Despite the setback, Pisa was able to continue its territorial expansion in Tuscany some decades afterwards, thanks to Guido da Montefeltro and Henry VII, Holy Roman Emperor. In the 14th century, Pisa changed from a commune to a signoria. Fazio Novello della Gerardesca, an enlightened aristocrat, improved relations with Florence, the Pope and Genoa. The treaty with Genoa was just the first of a series of commercial agreements. But in the first years of the following century, under the rule of Gabriello Maria Visconti, the city of Pisa was besieged by Milan, Florence, Genoa and France. Giovanni Gambacorta took advantage of this to rise to power, but he secretly negotiated surrender with the besiegers. On 6 October 1406 Pisa became a possession of Florence, which thus realized its long-held goal of access to the sea. That was the end of the Pisan Republic. Amalfi and Pisa Amalfi had already lost complete autonomy from the second half of the 11th century, although it continued running its commercial routes and enjoying a large degree of administrative autonomy, at least in this period. Under the protection of the Norman William II, third Duke of Apulia, in October 1126 the administrators of Amalfi reached a profitable commercial agreement with the neighboring Pisa, to collaborate in the protection of their common interests in the Tyrrhenian. This agreement was the outcome of a decades-old friendship with the Tuscan Republic. However, Amalfi had no army of its own to protect its commercial interests. That is why Amalfian ships are not often reported to have been engaged in military action against other maritime republics. In fact it was the Pisan army that broke the pact with Amalfi by attacking the coastal city on 4 August 1135 during the war waged by Pope Innocent II and the new Emperor Lothair II, Holy Roman Emperor, aided by the republics of Genoa and Pisa, against the Norman Roger II of Sicily, who controlled Amalfi. That war ended in favor of Roger II, who gained recognition of his rights over the territories of South Italy, but it was a severe blow for Amalfi, which lost both its fleet and its political autonomy. Venice, Ancona and Ragusa Commercial competition among Venice, Ancona and Ragusa was very strong because all of them bordered the Adriatic Sea. They fought open battles on more than one occasion. Venice, aware of its major economic and military power, disliked competition from other maritime cities in the Adriatic. Several Adriatic ports were under Venetian rule, but Ancona and Ragusa retained their independence. To avoid succumbing to Venetian rule, these two republics made multiple and lasting alliances. In 1174 Venice united its forces with Frederick I Barbarossa's imperial army to try to overpower Ancona. Frederick's intention was to reassert his authority over the Italian cities. The Venetians deployed numerous galleys and the galleon Totus Mundus in the port of Ancona, while imperial troops lay siege from the land. After some months of dramatic resistance by the Anconitans, supported by Byzantine troops, they were able to send a small contingent to Emilia Romagna to ask for help. Troops from Ferrara and Bertinoro arrived to save the city and repelled the imperial troops and the Venetians in battle. Venice conquered Ragusa in 1205 and held it until 1382 when Ragusa regained de facto freedom, paying tributes first to the Hungarians, and after the Battle of Mohax, to the Turks. During this period Ragusa reconfirmed its old alliance with Ancona. See also Italian city-states list of historic states of Italy Outremer Hanseatic League Thalassocracy Regatta of the Historical Marine Republics Notes Bibliography Maritime Republics Adolf Schaub, Storia del Comercio dei Popoli Latini del Mediterraneo Sino alla Fine della Crociate, Union Tipografico Editrice Torinese, 1915 Armando Lodolini, La Repubbliche del Mare, Edizioni Biblioteca di Storia Patria, Ente per la Diffusion e l'Educazione Storica, Rome 
1967 G. Benvenuti, La Republiche Marinaire. Amalfi, Pisa, Geneva, Venezia, Newton and Compton Editori, Roma 1989. Marcantonio Bragadin, Storia della Repubblica Marinare, Odoia, Bologna 2010, 240 pp, ISBN 978-88-6288-082-4, Duchy of Amalfi Umberto Moretti, La Prima Repubblica Marinara d'Italia, Amalfi, Con uno studio critico sulla scoperta della basola nautica, A. Forni, 1998 Republic of Genoaldo Padovano, Felice Volpe, La Grande Storia di Genova, Artemisia Progetti Editoriali, 2008, Volume 2, pp. 84, 91. Carlo Varese, Storia della Repubblica di Genova, Dalla Sua Origin Sino al 1814, Tipografia di Gravier, 1836 Republic of Pisagino Benvenuti, Storia della Repubblica di Pisa, Le Quattro Stagioni di una Meravigliosa Aventura, Giardini, 1961 Republic of Venezilvis Zorzi, La Repubblica del Leone, Storia di Venezia, Bompiani 2002 Samuel Romanin, Storia documentata di Venezia Editore Naratovic 1854 Republic of Ancona Various authors, Ancona Repubblica Marinara, Federico Barbarossa e la Marche, Arti Grafiche Città di Castello, 1972 Republic of Ragusa Sergio Anselmi e Antonio di Vittorio, Ragusa e il Mediterraneo, Ruolo e Funzioni di una Repubblica Marinara tra Medioevo ed Eta Moderna, Cacucci, 1990.